This natural reserve on the shores of the Bay of Bengal is a playground for wild birds. We are 150 kilometers north of Chennai, formerly Madras, on the road linking the island of Sriakota with the Indian subcontinent. On the eastern side of the island, the sea stretches out along 800 kilometers from north to south, making it an ideal spot for launching rockets from different polar to equatorial orbits, which is why one of India's key technology sites has been based here. The launch center, known as Shah, the Satish Dhawan Space Center, named after the research scientist and former president of the ISRO, the Indian Space Research Organization. The island is home to two launch pads for the two rockets developed by India. We have uh, two launch pads in this facility. We have also two proven satellite launch vehicles. The first uh, launch vehicle we call it as PSLV, uh, Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle. Originally that uh, vehicle has been uh, designed and realized for launching satellites in the polar orbits. The next generation vehicle what we have developed is called GSLV. That is a uh, vehicle for launching satellites in the geosynchronous orbits like communication satellites. Now both the vehicles are operational. Both the launch pads are also are operational. Both the vehicles can be launched from both launch pads. At Shah, the first launch site is a tower, inside which all the preparations are carried out, with walkways providing access to the different stages of the rocket. The structure is similar to that used at Kuru for the first Ariane, the tower being rolled back a few hours before takeoff. And this is the second launch pad. Here you can see preparations for the Chandrayaan lunar mission with the assembly of the different elements of the PSLV rocket. PSLV is a four-stage launch vehicle using liquid and solid propulsion. Initially designed for one-ton polar orbit satellites, PSLV is also able to launch one-ton craft into geostationary transfer orbit, which is the performance level required to launch Chandrayaan on its way to the moon. The other model, also entirely Indian built, is the GSLV, which has a two-ton capacity for geostationary transfer orbit. Both versions can be made ready at the same facilities. This is a two-part launch system, like Ariane 4 and 5 in French Guiana. Once the stages have been assembled with the booster strap-ons, satellite and fairing, the rocket is ready. It's then transported via rail to the launch area for takeoff. Chandrayaan is India's first mission to go beyond terrestrial orbit. Because it's moon mission and um, all people are carefully looking for, forward for its success and also it involves international cooperation, payloads from many other space agencies like ESA and uh, JPL and other places. We take, uh, we are, we take a little bit uh, extra care in looking at the things again and again, but essentially operations are same. In any launch mission, we must get 100% uh, success. Sriyari Kota is also like a real town, with the base's 2,000 employees living there with their families. The first PSLV launch took place in 1993. In total, there have been 13 PSLV and four GSLV launches carrying 35 satellites, including 16 for other countries. Satellites for telecommunications, telemedicine and teleeducation, observation satellites and even a return capsule. A wide range of missions have left from Sri Arikota. And with this first voyage to the moon, the Indian base is opening another new page in its history.